before I say my actual prediction for who I think will win the presidency, um, I want to preface by saying just because I think X person is going to win just doesn't mean I necessarily support and it's it's not an endorsement, it's a prediction. Of course, I'm going to vote for who I'm going to vote for. You can vote for who you want to vote for. That's all fine and dandy. All right, now that's out the way. I'm going to build some hype into this, but um, I guess I'll start with the 2016 election because you are from 2016 to 2020 to 2024. The common denominator is that you have Donald Trump running. Um, of course, in 2016... Um, Nobody expected Donald Trump to win. You know, you look at the forecast models, and I look at a lot of these, 538, which is the most reputable one, supposedly. Um, On election night in 2016, they had Hillary Clinton at about an 80% advantage to win the presidency. Of course, that didn't happen. And, you know, everybody was shocked by it, how the polls could epically fail. To predict such a outcome was dangerous, dangerous for sure. Now, the reason why I think personally is how do you categorize a Trump voter? When I ask you, think of a Trump voter in your head, you know, you can't, I'm sure you can think of it, the MAGA hat, you know, country guy, something like that, but you have all sorts of people that vote for Trump, you know, his. You know, obviously most of them are men, you know, straight men, religious, you know, you can pick out these sort of demographics, but it's pretty interesting how you have proud boys, white supremacists voting for Donald Trump, and you have a rise of like Asians and Indians voting for Trump now. Very two different types of people, Um, you know, gun nuts and vegetarians, it's kind of interesting. But that's one of the reasons why I think the media epically failed to predict the Donald Trump win in 2016. And on top of that, you know, polls are not very accurate because it's, you know, obviously it's just one statistic. It doesn't encompass every single voter. And I have a theory that, you know, these low propensity voters, people who don't answer polls, who just go about their business, don't think much. um, They don't really fill out polls and they tend to be those Trump voters. Fast forward to 2020, 538, and a lot of models predicted a Biden sweep. I think it was like 89 to 11, 89% for Biden, 11% for Trump. Of course, that was a much easier election to predict. I think the COVID pandemic really just, you know, it was one of those, you know, 1929 type of moments where it doesn't matter if it's FDR or William Jennings Bryan, some the incumbent will not win. But the interesting thing about 2020 that a lot of people don't remember and don't point out is that, so according to the polls and the average polls, this day in history, October 20th, 2020, well, for you guys, it's October 21st, but Biden was plus 8.6 in the popular poll, the national poll. Now I say that because, um, Come election time and once the election is said and done, Biden only won the popular vote by, I think, four. So that's a big discrepancy, 4%. That's that's crazy. If anything, the pollsters in 2020 did a worse job than the pollsters in 2016, believe it or not. You only remember 2016 because everybody thought, you know, Hillary was going to win in the back. Now, fast forward to 2024. First of all, you know... It's very hard to, you know, the incumbency bias, can you argue it's there? Can you argue it's not? I mean, Joe Biden was the incumbent, but now Kamala Harris is running. Donald Trump, you know, he he's not technically incumbent, but, you know, he didn't have to fight anyone to get to the nomination. So in any ways, this is one of those elections where it is an incumbent versus an, like I, I would treat Trump as more of the incumbent than I do Kamala Harris which is very interesting to say. Now, you look at the polls. Nationally, as of this moment, Harris is about plus 0.9, 0.9% nationally. And top, and you look at the battlegrounds, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, 
Trump on average is plus one. Now, if you know you look at the the media or the pollsters or whoever you want to call them over estimating the Democratic performance in 2020 and 2016, and you apply that bias to now, it looks like it's a Trump defeat. It looks like it's a Trump win, like Trump resoundingly defeats Harris. If Harris is only plus 0.9, and in 2016, on October 20th, Clinton was plus 6.4, this is not <laughs> a very good numbers you want from uh, the Democratic side of things. On top of that, you know, this is not a national vote because I almost guarantee, I, I, I will predict, my first prediction is that Kamala Harris will win the popular vote. But we're talking the Electoral College here. And, you know, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, that's all Trump has to win. And I believe Arizona. But he's looking good in Arizona. So he just has to win Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. He doesn't even have to worry about Michigan or Wisconsin. Michigan right now is plus 1.2 for Trump. So Kamala Harris is, she, you can see she's campaigning a lot in Detroit and Atlanta and all these places, places that Trump has a comfortable comfortable lead when you know you talk about these standards, how close this election will be. So, you know, with that said, you take all these factors into account. Trump has low propensity voters. He outdoes his poll numbers. Kamala Harris is plus 0.9 in the national poll. We're talking about an electoral college that, you know, we can argue if it's democratic or not. You take all these factors and, um, you know, for good, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on which camp you're in, I think my prediction is that Donald John Trump will win the presidency for a second time and unprecedented, not unprecedented because it's happened before, but I think the way the polls are looking and the way things are shaping up, um, you know, and I think if the polls were 100% correct right now, then he would also win. But, you know, the only way Kamala Harris will win is if the polls underestimate Kamala Harris or overestimate Trump. And we look at October 2020, we look at October 2016, the polls have over always overestimated the Democratic Party. And, you know, a lot of people will bring up, you know, well, in the midterms, the polls got it pretty well. But that was a Trumpless um, election. A lot of people, you know, people talk about single-issue voters, but they don't talk about single-candidate voters. And a lot of people just love Trump. You know, take with that with what you will. But that's my official prediction. Um, still vote, still go vote, 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 vote. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow and enjoy it.